All right, we're back, baby. 2024, welcome to your Twisted Tea, best post-race show ever. We'll have some analysis soon from one of the best riders to have raced in this championship and in Supercross as well. Thanks to Twisted Tea for backing our show. I'm Racer X. I'm Jason Wygant. Uh, we actually don't know right now who won the 250 class yet. They're still talking about, I'm assuming, Deegan going off the track in Moto2 and will he be penalized? Maybe Levi Kitchen won. Maybe we'll know by the time we're done with this show. We do know Jet Lawrence went 1-1. So we'll talk about that, show you some highlights, and uh, let's just start with 450s and talk to some riders to get their thoughts, and then we'll learn more afterwards. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I got it. No, my start wasn't good in the first one, but I actually made it work. I was probably fifth or sixth, and I went to the outside when I went down the hill, and I think Dylan made a mistake and kind of came to a, like a stop, and I just tagged his rear tire and went down, and then I fell again. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> it wasn't a great start, but I came – came back pretty good i rode well at the end of the moto and then second moto hunter came out like a can <laughs> came out of the cannon in the gate and i was right next to him so i kind of just followed him on the first turn and then phil actually came out of nowhere and i think passed me and him so um yeah it was uh, kind of chaotic but we actually had a, we had a good pace going and then um i i passed hunter in the switchback right here and i think the the pace kind of went up a little bit and um yeah i went off the track and tried my best but he, uh, when I came up behind him, he would he would answer, and I just got to get better at uh, finding some more pace. Um, yeah, it was a good day. <clears throat> Had a pretty cool gear set collab, so you always want to do a little extra good in that, you know. So you you got a little power to convince A stars for some more one off kits. Um, but no, it was a good day. Honestly, like I'm not too fond of this place, but it's been pretty good to us. So uh, yeah, maybe we'll come back and visit sometime soon. Um, I think definitely when uh, when the bike's not kind of working as well as you want it to be, it, uh, it you have to put a little bit more effort everywhere else just to kind of hold it down or whatever it's doing. You need to kind of adjust for that and use that bit more strength to hold it. And um, and yeah, I mean the first motor was the worst. I could say I kind of was at a bit of a limit. I couldn't push too hard. I could kind of push a little hard at the start when the bumps weren't so vicious. But once we got later halfway and later, it kind of got. A little worse when I tried to use more flow. Um, we got it sorted for the second one, but end up kind of going more to the front a little bit more. And um, but we'll thankfully we we're able to push if we were precise enough. And uh, but it's yeah, it's good to finally get 24 and 0 to kind of match Ricky and, and James. Um, but no, we're gonna go back to the drawing board, look at some stuff, and uh, and improve that. But then also improve myself. So we'll see in Supercross, I think we're a little heavier with our legs. And we don't move them as much because we have such stiff suspension. So we try and get the suspension to work more. Where in outdoors, you use your legs a lot more. So I think um, throughout the season, I think we just get better and better and kind of get my motor legs more and more. All right, that's our 450 riders. Uh, we are now joined by one of, not really talked about that much, I feel like, enough, Ryan Sometimes. Villapoto. Sometimes. Sometimes you get brought up. Um, Jet Lawrence won today. Yes. I, I think you saw that. Yes, I did. But the second moto was getting pretty gnarly. Now, Jed has a way of not winning by massive margins normally, but do you feel that that was getting beyond comfort zone with both Hunter and Chase? Honestly, I think he's still playing with the guys. Really? I do think he had more in the tank. I okay. think he's, that's, his, that's how intelligent he is on the motorcycle and yeah. and uh, and just managing the race, you know? Yeah. Like, if he needs to just wick it up a little bit, he can do that, and it's uh, he does it very easily. So. Um, I think those guys in second and third, you know, Chase rode, rode, rode way better the second moto. Yeah. Hunter was, was riding really well also the second yeah. moto. But I still feel like there's a lot more in the tank there, if he, if he need, need be. Plus, I asked him, is this a chance that it's the classic Supercross hangover? And he said, I'm 20. I don't get hungover. <laughs> Must feel good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not because he's too young to get hungover, because he doesn't drink. Just want everybody to know. Anyway. Do you think there's a little bit of that? He did have to sweat a Supercross title to a degree to the last round that maybe he wasn't quite on his A++ game. You've, you've been through that drill before. Uh, I mean, I look, it's a it's, uh, first round of, of pro yeah. motocross, so, um, and he's got a lot to live up from last year. Yes. 22 and 0. Yeah. So to come here, he's had massive success. I don't think he's lost a race at, nope. at Paula or at, nope. here at Fox. Uh, so I think also coming in, um, you know, obviously wanting to win, but uh, being smart about it. And yeah. he knows he has the speed. As long as he puts himself in a good position off yeah. the line, it's really his race to lose, in, in my opinion. Okay, so you weren't that worried I wasn't worried at all. I was yes. watching, and I thought he had everything under control, to be honest. James Steer in the booth said he even picks parts of the track where he's like, they can get close here. This is not an area they can pass. Yep. I'm, I can cruise through here. Yep. I can save some energy. So does that even start running through your mind? 
Um, I think I think yeah. I think it does. Obviously, yeah. if you have massive pressure, yeah. you know, you're, you're, there's spots you have to have to you know guard the inside. There's spots you think, like you said that there's no places to go around. You're not yeah. going around the long way around. Inside's the only option. It's the yeah. fast line. So yeah, there's parts on the track yes. that he has to you know uh, that that he can just ride and not yeah. worry about how close somebody is behind. We're going to get the 250s here in a moment. Okay, well, let's just pretend Deegan went 1-1. One, one. I don't know if he's getting penalized yet, but let's just talk about what we've seen so far. Okay, is this round one like, hey, it was wide open, he stamped it, maybe it's not so wide open, or is it round one, let's not overanalyze or get ahead of ourselves? I mean, I don't, I don't think let's overanalyze. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, I would say Tom struggled a little bit if I used the word struggled. Yeah. Um, He'll get I, better. He's going to get better. Yeah. He's two-time world champ, now Supercross champ, East Coast. So... Uh, I still think that he's going to be in this title fight when this comes down to the yeah. last round. So yes, he didn't have a stellar day today. Uh, yeah. Still, it was good, but it wasn't it wasn't great. Probably not what he wanted. Uh, and Levi was was good also. Uh, Deegs was was really good too. But you know those those front two, Deegs and Levi, they it wasn't like Deegan was much much you know way faster. It wasn't a twenty second lead. It was it was close. So yeah. Um, you know it is it is round one. So to leave here with a six six. Kind of that's not that's not good if you're Levi. That's yeah. not really what you want, yeah. right? So a two-two on the day for him was was solid, uh, and we have a lot of racing to go. You know that's one thing with the with the 250 class is you know they're they're not as consistent as guys like Jet in the 450 class. Yes. So anything can happen. The, they laid over on the ground. They have a first turn crash or whatever. Uh, it just opens up the doors for for everybody else. Now Levi's your guy, right? So I'm a Levi fan. Yes, you're a Levi I'm a fan. Levi fan. Northwest, yeah. Two things. A what about this hairstyle? Were you it consulted bit, on this? I wasn't consulted. It was a bit aggressive. Okay. Bit aggressive. Um, and after Supercross, he got so close and didn't get it. Yep. Did you consult him on that? Do you think he needed a little pick-me-up? Because he really rebounded well today. I I would say yes. yes. I didn't talk to him after okay. Supercross. Yes. Obviously, uh, I obviously knew he was bummed about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yep. Came down to the last round, winner take all. He lost it, right? Yep. So But yes, I was wondering what 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 Levi was going to show up yeah, today yeah, yeah. after. Was it a Supercross hangover? You know, was 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 he still down yeah. on, on that? What I saw today was was a, was a really good performance from him. A great, very um, very good start for him. But along with Deegan, who went one one too, you know. So Can argue we that. we know the kid, you know, Deeks has got some skill, right? We saw it. Washugal sticks out in my head last year. Yes. You know, there's he's got some some, and, and, and now he's 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 not a rookie, you know. So he's yeah. he's seen how this is all going to play out. So the, the the boys could be in trouble. Okay, it's only round one. It is only round one. But one one says a lot. Uh, let's hear from the 250 guys. Hopefully, at this point, they actually know who won. Yeah, uh, it was a good day. Uh, first moto, got a decent start and uh, just sent it the first lap and <laughs> made my way in third quick. It was pretty sweet, but uh, yeah, ended up winning. Levi got a little thing stuck in his foot bag or whatever, but uh, yeah, ended up making the pass right there when he had to pull over. And then um, yeah, second moto just ripped a nice hole shot. That was uh, it was nice. It's always nice starting out front, so. Yeah, and then, I mean, we went out and won that moto, so that's it now. Yeah, for sure. Um, overall good. Fastest qualifier was sick for me. That's kind of rare, so. Uh, yeah, and then a couple solid motos. Um, the first one, you know, Hayden had good pace there and um, kind of came down to the end there. Obviously, the thing got stuck in my boot, but um, in second moto, we were both riding really good also, and uh yeah, it's going to be a fun summer for sure. Right. Yeah, I had a great start, actually. I felt great uh, the first two laps, and Levi actually was pretty fast, so he passed me. And as my arms started to be tight, uh, I was like, okay, there's no way I can hold. Like, Aiden was behind me. I kind of let him pass after the pit lane because there was no way I could. Uh, he was faster than me. So I, I had really bad arm pump the whole model, first model, so I actually managed the third place. And um, second model was better. Um, I just crashed, tip over. I couldn't pass uh, Jerix Ward, and uh, I kind of get a little bit mad, and I, I had a small crash. But I still managed to finish third. Track is gnarly, actually, to be honest. Um, it's a different track than what we're going to have the rest of the series. So um, being on the, on the podium today is, is OK for me. OK, well, the discussion right here, how about that? Sometimes you think these guys are like at each other's throat and trying to choke each other out. There's Levi Kitchen, Hayden Deegan, and Deegan's crew just bench racing right now. Talking to uh, Levi real quick before the press conference, it still hasn't happened because they still don't know the results. Levi's like, I don't know if I want to be that guy. So he was trying to be chill about it. He'll take whatever happens. Not sure how Hayden feels. Anyway, let's get to some other 250 riders that we talked to in the media scrum. 
some guys that had some good days and some 450 guys as well. Yeah, it was, it was really good. I mean, qualifying was really good. I finally qualified first in at least one session, not overall, but I mean, I'll take it. But no, just a couple good starts. I at least started within, you know, reach of the top guys and yeah, just rode, rode my race and just made good passes and just tried to make smart decisions. So. I mean, it's, overall, it's the best day I've had racing as a pro. Like it's, it's, uh, I'm starting to make some good ground, and uh, yeah, finally, finally getting to show it a little bit. Like this for a whole year. Do you feel? It, was it kind of weird jumping back on that 250? Yeah, it was definitely very weird, and uh, yeah, but I mean, the bike handles amazing stuff. Gotta get used to shifting a lot more and all that. I think I was always in a gear a little high, and I was like, sorry for abusing the clutch, but uh, no, I mean, the bike's fantastic, handling good. Just really looking forward to getting used to it, and yeah, it's going to be good. Today at Pala, got my teeth kicked in, uh, got off to two pretty good starts. Second one, went down, came from last to 17th, 1917 on the day for 19th overall. Obviously, everyone's like, ah, it's kind of disappointing. It is, in a way, but you know what, everyone has to start at some point, so that's where I'm at. I went pretty good. Uh, first moto struggled a little bit, and second moto was better. Um, just trying to learn the bike and the, and the setup that we got to have for these national tracks. Um, was a little off this morning and uh, gradually got better throughout the day, but um, still got a lot to learn and uh, we'll be ready for next week. Coming into here, really, the only expectation was like a top 20 and just make it through the event healthy. Everyone besides uh, Garrett Marshbanks on the team made it through healthy, which that's a huge accomplishment because, you know, for how gnarly the track was, do you, if you guys, uh, uh, RJ Hampshire out, Marchbanks, yeah, uh, first moto, got off to a mid-pack start, I think I was like 19, something like that, and then tried to make my way back up, I believe I finished 14th, which was, I was, I was stoked on that, and then I was kind of, I was, I was feeling it, my lower back was, was pretty sore, like the muscles, so I was already fatigued, but, you know, we're here to suffer, right? Coming into the second moto, I lined up in between Deegan and Levi Kitchen, knowing that they're probably gonna get a better start than me, but I wanted to get a funnel. I wanted them to create a funnel for me, and that's exactly what happened. I think I came out like 12th, and I made my way in like, I believe ninth, and then I got passed by Juju, and then uh, Master Paul and I were battling for 25 minutes. And then he got around me, and then I, I moved me back into 11, which 14-11, first pro national. That's I say that's pretty good, and I'm healthy, so really couldn't ask for more. We'll just be back for next weekend. Um, felt good, felt strong. Um, need to work on bike setup a little bit, along with I'm sure everybody else in this paddock. So uh, we all uh, this place brings out the the demons in a motorcycle, and it was okay. Like I said, this this place is. Hole. It's not one of my favorite places, uh, so we survived it, uh, and I'm happy. Uh, I was happy to I pass Hunter today. Uh, it's the first time I can check that off my bucket list now, and uh, didn't last long. I uh, I got pinballed around pretty bad and worked my way back to ninth and just kind of settled in. So I'm happy. It actually was a pretty good day. 12:15, nothing to write home about, but honestly, I'm definitely pretty stoked on how the day went. It was. Uh, it's been a rough comeback from this uh, wrist injury that I suffered in Supercross and obviously a long time now since I've raced. So honestly, the expectations were a little low coming in here. I've been on Struggle Street, but I'm just glad when the gate dropped, I showed up and uh, yeah, I was honestly pretty happy with my riding today. Okay, we're gonna wrap this show up. We're joined by Sophie Phelps, current WMX Series points leader. Sophie, at Loretta's last year, I thought it might be the end for you. You were kind of seeing the end of the road and then WMX sparked back up and you're going racing again. It's true, yeah. I was I was ready to um, tone it down a little bit and just do some local races here and there. Obviously, I can't step away from dirt bikes entirely, but yeah. uh, it gets expensive, and we were sprinting at full speed towards a dead end road. So we thought, you know what, we're throwing too much money into this, and then all of a sudden they said, hey, we're back with yeah. WMX. Yeah. So yeah. so we said, never mind, we're sprinting again. So okay. yeah, we're back. And uh, you'll be racing at High Point on Friday, right? Correct, I believe yep. it's Friday. Okay, so we should see WMX in action. Yeah, I think it's Friday. I don't know. 
be there and watch WMX. So Sophie came to hang out, really just to be a spectator, just to watch? Yeah, yeah, yep. absolutely. I was already down here training, so I figured why not stay a couple extra days and watch watch the big dogs. So uh, take in what you saw. We were talking to Ryan Villapoto, so now you got to live up to that standard <laughs> of analysis. Okay. <laughs> he felt that Jet Lawrence, he's like, I don't think he was actually under as much heat as it looked. That's what the dude is good at, controlling it. What did you see? Because there was some serious pressure coming from Sexton and Hunter. Yeah. There was. I would say that I don't entirely agree with him, nor do I entirely disagree with him. It's good. Um, I, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's a pretty safe spot to be. Yes. <laughs> yes. I like it. Yes. But, um, yeah, I think you would see if uh, Chase or Aaron or Hunter yeah. crept in on him, uh, that he would turn up the speed. And that's one, like, talent that he has. And, um, well, not just talent. He's obviously worked for it. But it's a really yes. difficult thing to do as a rider is I need to go faster now. Okay, I'm just going to drop a couple seconds off my lap time, no big deal. Um, and he can do that. Now, Did sometimes he didn't do that as quickly. So that's why I say I that I don't think um, he was, I think he was under a little bit more pressure than maybe RV was saying. Um, it's and just, other races, where you've seen him maybe get that gap a little more quickly? Exactly, yeah. I see. Yeah, it, took, it seemed like it took a little bit more effort. Now, does he still look effortless out there? Absolutely. Yes. Um, and still, you know, very few mistakes and just so cool to watch, but. Yeah, I mean, that's from my perspective, and it could have totally been different, but that's my opinion. I know from talking to all these riders in the pits all the time that Jet Style, and also to a degree Chase Sexton, they've really changed the form that people are looking for in a motorcycle. They stand up more. The idea of staying on the pegs has just been taken to its zenith. Uh, do you, does that happen for you and also the riders that you're racing against? Are you studying their style and trying to adapt some of that? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, in fact, you mentioned we're going to High Point soon, and I totally have been watching past races from there and okay. just studying some film of like, hey, what am I going to be working with? Um, I haven't ridden on the East Coast much at all, so I've never been there. But um, anyways, yeah, I think we definitely study what they're doing and um, study videos. When you get some good slow-mo videos on Instagram, wow, yep. did you see how he did this? And mm -hmm. that was really impressive. So yeah, I think so. And I, I would actually agree that um, kind of overall the style of the sport is changing just a little bit towards that style of stand up a little bit longer um, and like hopping through bumps and yeah. he'll hop, I mean, he'll hop over any problem it seems like. But, yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I think the style has changed a little bit in that direction. And then a couple other little things that he does that's unique. So you're trying to borrow that a little bit for yourself? I would love to borrow some of that. Speed. Well, yeah, who wouldn't? <laughs> I did not realize this. Uh, last thing, so you've never even been to High Point? No. no that's so funny. So maybe that's what WMX unlocks because these are some legendary Easter tracks. You haven't been able to ride all of them. You get to race Iron Man as well. So yeah. that'll be a cool experience. Totally, yeah. yeah. I mean, would I prefer some West Coast tracks? Absolutely. For um, travel purposes. Yes. Yeah, yes. And, and I was yes. telling you earlier yes. that um, there's eight rounds. I'm from Southern Utah. On average, they're a little over 1,500 miles from my house. Um, and the closest one is about 1,100 miles. So just long, long hauls. And, Jeez. Um, but for every single round, which is what's kind of unique about that. But yeah, I'm grateful for the opportunity. Um, my parents are awesome. They stepped in. They're like, hey, one more year. Let's like, we're going to help you out here. So they're awesome to help me out through this. And so are all my sponsors. And hey, how can we help you get there? So uh, yeah, yeah, I'm really excited to ride all these tracks. There's a bunch that I've never ridden. That's cool. Um, you said you're 21 now. Are you interested in one of these? or? You're too much racing right now. Absolutely not. Well, aside from racing, um, I just don't drink alcohol. And um, But I appreciate the offer and I hope it's good. You're a college student too, aren't you? I am, yes. So much to learn. So much to learn about college. <laughs> I said uh, this was the last thing I was going to ask, but I have one more. I forgot. You and Chance Hymas, I saw you bench racing. Aren't you part of this, what is it called? Rec? All right. What, what is the name of the series? The RMX series? RMX. Yes. <laughs> yes. So you guys are like alumni of that. You, you, you see him probably growing up uh, a lot. You got to be pumped for him today. Yes. Oh my gosh. Totally. Yeah. Yes. We, we rode a lot together and uh, we were on the same tracks is what I should say because really, you know, like he would come past me and my goal was to not get laughed in 10 minutes or whatever it was. But You're in the same races at times. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally. When we yep. race in the B class and whatever uh -huh. and then yeah. on super minis and yeah. So, yeah. oh my gosh, I've always had so much fun growing up with him and um, playing Reflex on the Xbox or whatever we would do, right? Okay. You know, all sorts of, yeah, just growing up and um, all the shenanigans that happen at local races. So it was awesome. And RMX was like a great environment for that. We had a ton of awesome friends that are still great riders. So yeah, I, Chunk is awesome. I yeah. love being around him and I'm so stoked for him today. He crushed it today. Yes. He did. Yeah, he did. All right, good job, Sophia Phelps. Why don't you come back and hang with us at High Point? Deal. That's we'll a good do it plan. again. I'll see you there. And then I'll ask again and you'll be too disciplined again. <laughs> um, you can ask me as many times as you like. And someday maybe I'll switch your opinion on it too. Oh, that's impressive. <laughs> that's impressive. Well, on camera, I'm just holding the thing. So oh, we don't okay. have verification. Ooh, we don't okay. have any verification. There's no proof. 
Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just holding it, everybody. Uh, that's Sophia <laughs> Phelps. Thanks to Ryan Villopoto. Uh, we still don't have our 250 results. We'll try to figure that out. And uh, thanks to Twisted T for backing our show. We'll see you next week at Hangtown.